Ooh, this woman is going to take the IELTS exam and she's studying for speaking task two. Here's the question she's looking at. Describe a restaurant you like. You should say what the name of the restaurant is, where the restaurant is located, when you first visited the restaurant, what your favorite thing on the menu is, why you would recommend the restaurant. Okay, do you know how to answer this question? Well, in this lesson, I'm going to teach you exactly how you should answer it. Hey, if you like getting practice like this, I would be so happy if you smash that subscribe button right down there. Okay, so the first question I want to ask you is, should you take notes? Do you take notes for your tasks on the IELTS? I think for this one, it would be great to take some very simple notes. Now, you don't have to make a whole outline because this is your outline, right? I mean, all your points here is what you're going to talk about. First, you're going to say what the name of the restaurant is. Then you're going to say where the restaurant is located. Okay, these are only going to take you like five seconds, right? Five seconds. My favorite restaurant is McDonald's. Don't say McDonald's. <laughs> That's probably not a good choice. Okay, where the restaurant is located. That's going to take you like five or ten seconds. Wow, we have to speak for two minutes. What are we going to say? How are we going to fill up this time? Do you know how? You know, this is a very common mistake. People get nervous and they only talk for like one minute. Well, I think you should talk for at least a minute and 45 seconds. But hey, anything close to two minutes would be great. Okay, don't talk for less than, you know, if you practice enough, then you can get to the point where you're speaking for two minutes, okay? I'm going to make lots of practice videos like this to help you, to help you sort of gauge your time. Gauge means sort of calculate, how to get good at calculating your time, okay? So like I said, the biggest thing people, you know, fail to do is to speak. And this is the speaking task, so you should say more. Say lots, okay? now. How can you say more? What should you say? Well, this is going to be the structure of your answer. Okay, first you're going to have an introduction and last you're going to have a conclusion, right? Now, in the middle, for each point, you're going to try to think of some personal examples you can give or some extra details about the point. Okay, so every point you're going to try to be thinking about these, right? So, so let's take a look at the question. Okay, now for the first one, what the name of the restaurant is? Well, can we have any personal examples about that? Not really. It's just the name, right? The name of the restaurant. And what about more details? Can we add any more details? Well, not really. Okay, so in this one, we don't really have that option. But what about this one? Where the restaurant is located? Can we give a personal example of where it's located? Well, not really. I mean, its location is just its location. But can we add some extra details? Yes. Okay, look at this. We could say something like this. It's nestled in a quiet neighborhood in northeast Calgary. So lots of people don't even know about it. Okay, you could say this. Nestled. Do you know what that means? Nestled means sort of located or situated in. It's surrounded by a nice quiet neighborhood in northeast Calgary. So lots of people don't even know it exists. Okay, usually the most famous restaurants are in busy places where lots of people can see it. Right? If the restaurant is in a quiet place, I mean, maybe a lot of people don't even know about it. Okay, so we're adding a little bit more detail here, which is great if you can add some detail. Okay, or we could say this, it's located in a busy shopping center on 4th Street. Great, we're adding some more detail. Now, if you say this, 4th Street, that's assuming that you're talking about the current city that you're in. So when you're taking the exam, 
right, and you say this, then wherever you're taking the exam, that's the restaurant you're talking about, right? I mean, like, let's say you're taking the exam in Toronto, and you say the restaurant is located, you know, uh, in a busy shopping center on 4th Street. That means in Toronto, right? Now, if you mean another city, then you need to say that other city. Okay, you can't just say 4th Street if it's in a different country, right? For example, you could say this. It's located in downtown Madrid, not far from the train station. Okay, you're giving a little bit extra information. Not too far from the train station. Okay, so how should you start your answer? What should you say? What should the first thing you say be? Okay, well, the examiner is going to say something like this. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please start speaking now. Okay, what are your first words going to be? Well, my first words would be this. All right, so this is how native English speakers start an answer or start telling a story or something like that. Okay, so these this is how I would recommend starting. You could use this for anything. For example, you could say, all right, so my favorite movie is Gladiator or my favorite food is Mexican food. All right, so a favorite trip I went on was back in 2005 with my family. We went to Spain, something like that, okay? We very often start with these words. So I would recommend you start with these words too. Okay, now some people say that you should start your answer by basically telling the instructor or telling the examiner what you're going to say. Like, you know, maybe like this. All right, so I'm gonna talk about my favorite restaurant. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to talk about my favorite restaurant. That's in my opinion, that's a little bit redundant. Redundant means sort of useless and unnecessary because the examiner already knows what you're going to talk about. He's seen he or she has seen the card, right? On the card and you know that. So to say something that you both know is a little bit redundant. But you could say this if you want. You could say, all right, so I'm going to talk about my favorite restaurant. That's fine. But for me, I would I would start this way. All right, so my favorite restaurant is called Mad English Cafe. Okay, I would just start by saying what my favorite restaurant is. All right, so my favorite restaurant is Mad English Cafe. Now, what's next? Well, where the restaurant is located. Okay, where is it located? Well, it's nestled in a quiet neighborhood next to Hillview Park. Okay, I'm giving a little bit more detail. Okay, now what's next? When you first visited the restaurant. Hmm, when did we first visit the restaurant? Well, I first visited the restaurant back in 2014. My friend had his birthday party there and we had a great time. I had never heard of the restaurant before, but after that night, I've gone back so many times. Okay, uh, now very often when we're remembering something in the past, we use the word back. Back in 2014, you don't need to use that word, but it's sort of nice to use that word, okay? So we're answering the question here in our first sentence. I first visited the restaurant back in 2014. Right now, you answered the question. You could be done. But remember, we need to make it a little bit longer, right? So we need to add some detail. Look, my friend had his birthday party there. Now, the question didn't ask uh, why. Why did you go to the restaurant? That wasn't on the card. But we could add it as some extra information, right? So this is why you went to the restaurant the first time, right? My friend had his birthday party there and we had a great time. I had never heard of the restaurant before, but after that night, I've gone back many times. Okay, so you're saying something personal here. You're giving some, some, some sort of personal input. You're not just talking about it as like some event or some, you're, you're actually making it personal. I think that is the best thing that you can do uh, for your answer on task two and all your all your answers okay even your writing it's good to use personal examples because they fill up space and they make it more real right people are really personal if you sound very fake 
you know, I mean, that's not good. You're not going to get a good score. So try to just relax, have a good time, and, and try to actually speak from your heart. Give some personal examples. Okay, so what's next? What your favorite thing on the menu is. All right, let's take a look. The restaurant has so many great dishes, but if I had to pick a favorite, I would say the spicy chicken quesadillas are the best. They're served with sour cream and homemade salsa. When you start eating them, you can't stop. Last time I went there, I ate four quesadillas. Sometimes Mexican food is too spicy for me, but these quesadillas have the perfect amount of spice. Okay, great answer. Okay, so what did we say? First thing we said is the restaurant has so many great dishes. But if I had to pick one, I would pick the chicken, the spicy chicken quesadillas. So that's the answer to the, the point, right, that we need to talk about. But then we're adding some extra information. They're served with sour cream and homemade salsa. When you start eating them, you can't stop. That's how good they are. Last time I went there, we're giving a personal example, right? So we have details personal examples. If you do this, you're going to get a great score on the IELTS speaking part. Hopefully a great score on the whole exam. Okay, so last time I went there, I ate four quesadillas. Sometimes me Mexican food is too spicy for me, but these quesadillas have the perfect amount of spice. Okay, I think that's a great uh, answer to that point. Now, I want you to pay attention to the time. Okay, the time is very important. You can't speak, you know, more than two minutes, right? The, ex the examiner is going to say, okay, time is up. So you need to manage your time pretty well. Okay, so, I mean, this point, the name of the restaurant, that was really quick, right? This one was really quick. This one was really quick. So all of these three only took about 30 seconds. And then this one, took about 30 seconds, so now we have a whole minute left. Okay, so when you first see the question, you need to think about which points are going to be longer and which points are going to be shorter. Okay, think about, uh, try, to, try to pick one point that you can talk about for a while. Okay, hopefully it's the last one. For example, here, why you would recommend the restaurant. I think this is the easiest one to talk about for a while. So we can talk about this one for a whole minute, right? Why would you recommend the restaurant? You could say anything, maybe live music, um, you know, the atmosphere is really nice, the food is great, you know, the service is great. You could say so many different things, okay? So I just want you to, to pay attention to that. When you first read the card, then try to think about that, right? Try to think about how you're going to structure the time so that you don't speak too little and or too much. Some people just talk, talk, talk about one thing and they, they, they need to stay sort of organized. You should talk about all of this. You can't just talk all the time about, you know, maybe two or three points. You have to say everything that's on the card. You have to mention it, at least for a little, you know, for a short time, right? That's how you'll get a good mark. Okay, so let's talk about notes. So what, what would you actually write? Well, this is what I would write, okay? You have the card, the question card, and you have a separate sheet of paper. So in this one, there were, there were five points, right? The first one was the name of the restaurant. So I would just write name, and you could put the name of the restaurant, but you, you don't even need to put this because you'll remember the name of the restaurant, right? Location, just put location, near park. When, 2014, birthday party. Favorite food, quesadillas. Recommend, atmosphere, music, service, price, fresh food. Okay, so you can give all kinds of recommendations. Now, look how short and simple this is. Um, now, this is even a lot of information to write down in one minute. Could you write all of this in one minute? I mean, you also need time to sort of think, right? So if you could write this much, that would be great. Um, but if you can't, you know, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I think that the most important thing is just try to relax. Just try to relax and speak from your heart. You don't have enough time to prepare. Nobody has enough time. 
I wouldn't have enough time to prepare for this question, and I'm a native English speaker. Okay, so your answer doesn't need to be perfect. It just just needs to be natural. It's okay to say, um, hmm, wow, that's a that's a hard question, or wow, I've never thought about that before. Um, just give me a moment to give me a moment to gather my thoughts. Gather my thoughts means give me a moment to think about it, okay? Those are just real situations that happen. You, your answer is not going to be perfect and have a perfect outline, a perfect structure. You're not going to have a perfect time. You're not going to speak for exactly two minutes. It's, it's going to be imperfect. But, you know, we're just going to try to practice to make it as good as we can, okay? So don't worry too much about it. Okay, so let's take a look at our last point, which is recommend. Now, we, remember, we talked about this for about one minute, so we need to, to talk for another whole minute about our recommendation. Okay, so here we go. I would recommend this restaurant for so many reasons. First off, it has great food. The food is always really fresh. Also, the atmosphere is really warm and welcoming. It's always a busy place, but it never feels too cramped. Cramped? means like busy and sort of like there's lots of people and you, you don't have a lot of space the tables are too close together you're sort of cramped okay that's what that's what that word means okay it never feels too cramped they have live spanish music playing all evening which puts everyone in a great mood another thing that makes the restaurant so great is that the prices are reasonable hey i like reasonable prices Okay, last time I was there, my friends and I ate and drank till our heart's content, and the bill was under a hundred dollars. Do you know what till our heart's content means? That's an expression in English that means uh, till you're fully satisfied. You ate and drank till your heart's content, till you were full. You were happy, you were satisfied. Okay, so it was under a hundred dollars. That's a lot cheaper than other restaurants in the city. That's why I've been back there so often, because I can afford it. The service is also amazing at the restaurant. The servers go out of their way to give you a good time. For example, one time I was there, they gave us sombreros to wear and taught us how to say some words in Spanish. Okay, great. So now we, we talked for a while about this. We gave personal examples, right? What what we did, for example, like they gave us sombreros, we learned some Spanish, um, you know, we talked, gave some more uh, details, you know, how much the bill costs, you know, why we would recommend this place, we gave a bunch of reasons why we're recommending it. Okay, then we're done, right? Now, we just have conclusion. What's our conclusion going to be? Well, conclusion is just very simple. Okay, don't think about it too much. Just say, anyway, this is a word we use to signal that we're going to end our answer or we're going to stop speaking. Remember, what was the signal for starting our answer? All right, so, my favorite movie, all right, so, uh, I love pizza because, okay, so you, you could say that. Now, to end, we say, anyway. Anyway, those are some reasons why I love the restaurant, and I would recommend it to anyone. Anyway, those are some reasons why I love the restaurant. Anyway, those are some reasons why Mexico is my favorite country. Anyway, uh, those are some reasons why Gladiator is my favorite movie. Anyway, that was a trip I'll never forget. It was so memorable. It'll be in my mind for the rest of my life. Okay, so you can just always end off with this word anyway. You can use it for, for anything, okay? So let's do some homework. Here's the question. Talk about a fun trip you went on. You should say where you went, who you went with, how you traveled, why you had a good time. Why did you have a good time? Okay, so now you don't have to answer the full question. Just make a, a short uh, outline or, or tell me what your notes would be for this, okay? Just try to make some short notes that you think you could write in one minute and post them right down there in the comments. Hey, if you find tips like this helpful, I'd appreciate if you let me know in the comments if you want me to make more videos like this. And also, if you if you do find tips like this helpful, I'd be so happy if you smash that like button right down there. That helps my videos get a little bit more 
popular on YouTube. Hey, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.